together likely machine terribly lightly maligned tailors little men who tried uh, today we have the lmt mrp dash l spec war 11 5 receiver set and 12 5 barrel full disclosure on this upper is that i have no relationship with lmt whatsoever this special upper was sent in for review by a very kind viewer of the channel and i do just want to say thanks to everyone who has sent anything into the channel for review because of you guys i've gotten to play around with lmts lwrc's vcogs acogs lcans actually scratch that last one but a lot of awesome items i otherwise wouldn't have had the chance to play around with so thanks to the best fans on the planet back to lmt i do have access to their stuff at dealer pricing through a third-party distributor but i've never bought anything from them this is my first encounter of the weird kind Getting into basics, let's start out with the Spec War receiver set. These are offered in 9.5 inch, 11.5 inch as we see here, and 14.5 inch versions. There are also some quad rail versions as well for you diehard quad rail gang guys. Essentially what we have here is a monolithic upper end rail, meaning that the entire system is machined out of one piece of aluminum. Now I don't know the exact material as they don't list it, but it's either 6061 or 7075, both of which for this application are fine. Starting at the back, we have a mostly mil-spec-ish upper, board assist, shell deflector, and dust cover. One thing to note is that due to the dimensions around the dust cover, it is not compatible with the PDQ lever attached to my available SBR lower. So when you see me tap, rack, bang for reloads, that's not the upper's fault per se, that's the PDQ stops the bolt from being locked back. Believe me, it has more than enough gas to lock the bolt back. Moving forward, we have essentially 11.5 inches of 7-sided M-lock and a continuous pick rail on top. Again, this is a monolithic piece of aluminum, so the rail cannot shift, making this one of the best candidates for mounting your laser aiming modules and anything that requires zero retention. Everything on the receiver set is machined well, the rail is light and slim, there is a lot to like other than the transfer of money from your bank account. Speaking of transferring, this is one piece of metal rather than three or four on a normal upper, handguard, barrel nut, etc. And uh, it transfers heat really well, everywhere, especially your hands. This thing gets hot fast. Within 60 to 80 rounds, it becomes untouchable without a heat wrap and gloves, and under high rates of fire, this thing gets burning hot. Now, everything gets hot, this thing just gets hotter. Is it a deal breaker? Nope, just something to note. Moving on to the barrel, this is an odd one. I am going to choose someone to throw under the bus for the issues we had with this, but I think it's warranted for the cost and claims made about these barrels. So when I received the package, took it out to test fire, it wouldn't cycle anything. Suppressed, unsuppressed, EBCG, regular BCGs, nothing worked. Now this barrel is a special case, as it started out its life as either a 14.5 inch or 16 inch mid from LMT. It was then sent to D. Wilson to be cut down to 12.5 inches to match with the Specwar 11.5 inch receiver set. Between LMT and D. Wilson, someone forgot to check the gas tube. Now the LMT system uses a straight gas tube with their gas blocks. Pros and cons for some applications, but the biggest con in this case is that it's not immediately obvious when you install it upside down. So when I checked it, sure enough, the black nitride straight gas tube was installed upside down. A simple way to stop this from happening in the first place is to take a white paint pen and dab the side that faces up, and bam, for less than a penny, your $700 barrel will actually function. Now I talked to the owner of this rifle and a couple other people about D. Wilson and LMT, and neither has a great reputation for QC somehow, given the costs that they charge for these things. So I called D. Wilson and asked him a couple questions about his cut jobs. Number one was does he take off the gas block and tube when cutting the barrel? He said no, he does not. I also asked him if he opens up the gas port on the cut barrels due to the reduced dwell time when coming from the longer barrels. He also said no, which we'll get to that later. Now he didn't know who I was or the issues I was having, but in answering my questions, he puts the blame squarely on LMT. Now on LMT's website, they claim that they test fire every barrel they ship. 
which obviously isn't possible. If anyone had tested this barrel, the issue would have been immediately apparent. Funnily enough, LMT is currently hiring assemblers and IC personnel, so it checks out. 6040 LMT is the big dumb and doesn't check their $700 barrels before shipment. Bravo. Either way, back to the barrel itself, we have a 12 and a half inch mid-length cut barrel. I believe this is the chrome molly version with a one in seven twist, cryogenically treated finish, and maybe chrome lined. It is also possible that this is the stainless steel version, which has a one in seven five twist and a slightly different coating, but all the important markings have been removed due to the cut job. Now to work with the LMT spec or receiver set, LMT has a special extension and knot cut in the back of the barrel so that it can index and lock into the receiver set. It slides in, two bolts get inserted and torqued down to 140 inch pounds with their special torque limiter tool that is sold separately and is hundred plus dollars. But what you end up with is a very solid barrel lockup, very similar to what you'll find in some high end precision rifles, just on a smaller scale, you can in theory swap calibers and lengths pretty easily provided your pocketbook can keep up. Now mid length on a 12 and a half inch in theory should be a great shooting system, but not so with LMT. Now Garantham actually talked to me a little bit about his spec war and some of the things they were looking for out of it while it was in development for the military. They wanted a combat gassed system. I just call it overgassed, but call it what you will, and specifically comboed with a Surefire RC2. Now keep in mind that this is a cut down 12 and a half inch version from a longer barrel. So in theory, the gas port should have been tuned for the longer barrel. So it should actually be on the softer side. Now, as you see it, I am running a Turbo K, which isn't a super gassy can. And in the back, I am using the CAC K-Spec H3 buffer, which is the two stage buffer and a 308 power spring. And while certainly manageable, I think it's a bit over tuned. I'm all for reliability headroom, but this isn't headroom, it's the vaulted ceilings on the Sistine Chapel. Now keep in mind, this is a complaint from the civilian shooter's perspective on a $2,500 upper. I understand if I'm designing a rifle for a combat scenario maintained by room temp IQ meat sticks, well, yeah, the extra gas is fine, just know what you're getting into. The second or third piece of wonder tech, depending on who you ask, is going to be the EBCG. Now to start, I've had some people tell me that the full auto enhanced BCG isn't supposed to be used for the shorter barrels. LMT begs to differ according to their website. Unfortunately, details and citations are vague, so bear with me and their laundry list of features. The bolt is made from some proprietary material, which is much more betterer. The lugs have relief cuts everywhere for better performance with high pressure loads. The extractor has a lobster tail to fit two separate springs for better extractor life and more even pressure. Uh, the pressure at this point seems pretty soft, so okay, maybe, I guess. Nice chrome coating is hard and easy to clean. Now onto the carrier. The cam path has been altered for increased dwell time, which can help with reliability and extraction. The gas flow has been optimized over the bolt tail for more consistency. An extra port on the side for faster venting of that additional gas. Supposedly that helps to reduce gas to the face, uh, which is needed. Extra channel cuts into the side to clear debris. The face of the carrier is cone shaped for better bore alignment. This may help with accuracy, but also just consistency overall. Also, I have seen some of these carriers ship with crooked gas keys and gas keys that weren't torqued down at all. Fortunately, my example is holding up really well for the last thousand rounds or so. So what's the cost for all of these improvements? Well, about 600 bucks, making it, I think, the most expensive BCG on the market. All that work to deal with the extra gas when you could have just turned down the gas. Anyways, jokes aside, if you get one that is assembled correctly, I am sure it's great and going to perform well for you. Now, the only component I don't have from LMT is the charging handle. I used the new Breek sledgehammer with its gas port, raised ridge, and internal venting to help divert gas to my face, and it did what it could. Now, I do want to say, originally, I thought that this was the worst suppressed shooting experience of all time when I first got it out to the range after I got it fixed, that is. Because the gas to the face was just miserable, a terrible experience no matter what I did. But the culprit is actually not LMT, it's actually the Griffin Armament Gate Lock System, which we will talk about that. That is uh, the worst way to mount a suppressor, but we'll get to that in good time. But with the Gate Lock System removed, it was tolerable, with, again, the heaviest buffer and spring combo you can put in a buffer tube. So that kind of brings us to shootability. In the aforementioned setup, it's a duty gun. It's going to run hard, harder than just about every other comparable offering on the market. Geisley and Criterion are probably gonna to be towards the top of that stack, BCM and DD below them, and somewhere down near the bottom is gonna be the LMT. Fortunately, or unfortunately, that is by design. 
Now, if you shoot this unsuppressed with heavy buffers and springs, it's fine, nothing to write home about. Now, the flip side of that coin is that with no cleaning and barely any lube, reliability was perfect after I fixed it. Moving on to accuracy, fortunately, the somewhat heavy profile barrel on a duty gun do shoot well. So piecing this together for roughly 2500 bucks or slightly less if you can find some deals or maybe some used components, what you end up is a really slick receiver set, maybe the best one out there, with a barrel and BCG set up for super hard use. I, personally, I would not spend my own money on one of these. Now the owner of this will have a cool system that will last him basically forever, and for some people if money doesn't matter, this is definitely a cool piece with a lot of very interesting tech built into that. You pay for all of that tech, but again it is cool. Now what would I do as a value-seeking civilian who lives in the farmlands of South Dakota? Well, I would buy the receiver set, send your favorite Geisley or Criterion hybrid barrel to D. Wilson to convert them to the LMT system, and end up with a lighter, maybe more accurate, arguably just as reliable setup for about 1500 bucks, not including your BCG charging handle and muzzle device of choice. D. Wilson can convert most barrels for about 125 bucks, and if the receiver set is worth it to you, which again, may be the best one on the market, that could be a tantalizing option. Personally, I think the LMT barrel isn't worth the squeeze in a civilian application. Now, if you are uh, planning on fighting in mud or in desert conditions or something like that, maybe that uh, sort of overgassed system is worth it for you. And very similarly on the BCG as well, while the tech is very cool and certainly unique, I'm just not sure the juice is worth the squeeze for 99.9% .9 of people, even if you are a very active shooter. But that's just me, and somewhere an LMT fanatic just died inside. But with all that out of the way, guys, let me know what you think of the LMT spec war and barrel system in the comments down below if there's another one of these high-end bills that I should check out. But with all that out of the way, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed. I will see you in the next one. God bless. That gets hot. Sorry, let me get in focus. That gets hot. Oh, buddy. Almost like it's all one piece. That gets hot. Whoa. That was not very many rounds. That thing is hot.